Dark Cast Network. The light shines brightest on our indie podcasts. Hi, this is Kelly. And this is Jenna. And you're listening to ODFM. Today's episode is One Daniels from Murder. These are the dens I know, I know. These are so there was a <laughs> there was a new kids on the block. There's or not new kids on the block. That would be amazing. No, it was kids on the block. Okay. Do you remember that comedy show in Canada? Yeah, it was comedy. Um, kids wait, on the block? Was it kids, kids on, on the block? No, wait, it was kids on kid, ki- um oh my god. Kids what in the was hall. It? Kids, kids in the hall. hall. Was it? <laughs> kids on the block. It was like it sounds familiar, but it's not ah, quite there. The right stuff. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's no. quite the mashup you got going. Yeah. On. <laughs> New Kids on the Block with Kids in the Hall. <laughs> Bam! Now, Kids on the Hall, they had a skit with, these are the Daves I know. I know because they knew oh, a bunch yes, of Daves. The Daves. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. So this is the Daniels. Oh, I was going to tell you, I just had dinner with one of our Patreon fans and one of my good friends. Oh, well, that's but cool. She said to tell you hi, Sarah. <gasps> Sarah Rice. She was like, Can't tell Jenna hi. I know she doesn't know who I am. But <laughs> Oh, but that's so cool. No, I I, I know I know because she likes our posts and things. So right. And she like, said that. She's you know. like, I hope she notices that I do that. So that I do, I do. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Oh, yeah. tell her I said hi too. She's so sweet. I will. Well, so. we can leave it on this and then she'll know. <gasps> oh, okay, cool. And we also have to do a shout out. Oh yes. We have a new Patreon fan. <gasps> We're so excited. Yes. Yeah. Cassie. Cassie. Plus, if um, you look on Instagram, I think her shop is on Instagram. Yep. She has a shop where she crochets these little creatures. They're freaking adorable called unusual plushies. <gasps> she makes zombie bunnies and little zombie creatures. And yeah, amazing. Oh, that sounds awesome. And little octopi. And yeah, oh, there's like octopuses. It's octopuses, Octop- not octopi. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Octopuses? Uh, pisses. That's it. <laughs> Octa- pussy. Octop- no. No, that's, no. That's a movie. That's, that's yeah. a movie. Right. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Oh, thank you. Shout out. Yay. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, my gosh. And if you think that we don't see all of your likes and comments and all, oh, man. Oh, we, we do. do. <laughs> We're so we excited. Do. I, I still, every time someone like does something, I'm like, people listen. <laughs> There's people out there that know what we're doing. I know. What? It still weirds me out a little bit. I got to tell you. I'm like, oh, look at that. We should watch what we <laughs> say. <laughs> nah. Seriously. Nah. Oh, That's boring. Oh, oh yes. So we are recording with Spreaker Prime. Spreaker Prime. Yes. Very excited super, about using super this Super cool now. platform. Yes. They invited us to their platform and they have their own podcast player. So, and you can even download that and play all their podcasts and their recommendations. There's a bunch on there that I hadn't seen before. Yes, I just downloaded it. It was very, uh, very user friendly. Yes. Liking it a lot. Yep. So check out Spreaker, bitches. Yeah. So I struggled with what to call this one, but we already had a disappearance one. We already had a daughter. I was like, what am I going to do? Okay. So this is, this is what I came up with. I have to preface this. By saying that technically this is still an unsolved case. Yikes. Okay. I was going to say that anyway, but then I was reading um, a post in a, uh, I don't know, Facebook or something, uh, podcasters group that I joined that said something about, you know, people really need to say that at the beginning because there's those of us out there who have like anxiety, who really have a hard Mm. time with those cases. And I'm like, oh, I get it because I have anxiety and Yep, can't handle I, those unsolved. I yeah, I can't relax to unsolved mysteries. Like I yeah, can, that one. I, I need. The, I still want to watch it, but I, I need the now. I, I can watch like the ones from the eighties now. Yeah, usually the a follow update. up. Yeah, right. Yeah, and then I'm right, then I'm cool. But yeah, no, I want the resolution. Damn it, life is it. full of non resolutions Oh my god, life is so, unresolved in general. So right. yeah, that's need why some solving. I like the romantic comedies and stuff, and people are like, it's so fake. I'm like, I know, because yeah. real life sucks. Yeah, so. real life never ends <laughs> in a happy, a happy ending. ending. <laughs> Nobody, end, well, some people right. have a happy ending when they go to for yeah. massages, but I hear. <laughs> I was like, what? 
<laughs> I totally it took me a minute. I'm like, what? sorry, I'm off on weird tangents today. Oh my god. Okay. Lord. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So this is about a 16 year old girl. Well, she was practically 16. Okay. Uh, Monique Daniels. She okay. was only two weeks away from her 16th birthday oh, man. when she disappeared from her home in Moore, Oklahoma. She has never been found. <gasps> Stop it. Some believe she ran away, but others, myself included, uh-huh. believe that she died at the hands of someone she knew very, very well. Oh, no. That usually happens. Mm-hmm. God, I just wonder how so many bodies aren't found. But then again, I'm always like, mm-hmm. there is so much land out there, especially oh, yeah. in America. Right. We just were saying Oof. how we still haven't found Bigfoot. I mean, you know, that all well, kinds of- very true. <laughs> Anyway, he's, he's the master, <laughs> master right. hider. Yes, exactly. Social distancing champion. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so Monique Christine Daniels, who went by the nickname Nikki. Oh, what? Oh, because of Monique. Okay, Monique, got it. Yeah, yeah. It took me Nikki, a second no, too, and then Monique, I got it. Okay. Monique, Monique. I got Nikki, it. Right. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, she was born June sixteenth, nineteen seventy six. So very ah, close in age really to close us, to right? Us. Okay. Mm-hmm. She was the oldest of four children born to her mother, Candace, and her biological father. Not a lot of information on the beginning of her life. Don't know her biological father's name. Don't know. I I don't know anything about that. Um, I do know that Monique and her siblings were allegedly sexually abused by their biological father. Oh, good. He's out of the picture then. Yes. And he did go to prison for sex crimes of some kind but i don't know who he is and i don't know exactly what he went for okay and i don't know if what he was convicted of has to do with the kids or something else but something else it's there not a great guy right okay so again because this is an unsolved case it's not like on wikipedia or anything yet so Mm -hmm. there's Mm -hmm. some of the information is a little spotty but it's still such a great story that i had to share this one So sometime after her mother broke up with her biological father, she and her four siblings, you know, her mother, Candace, who was in the military, married Charles Daniels, a sergeant in the Air Force. His last name was Daniels. So that's how she got the last Ah, name Daniels. Obviously, they all took on the last name. And then Candace and Chuck had two children together, twin boys. So there's six of them now. Wow. They're going to be fam. That's a lot of kid looks. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So when Monique disappeared in June of 1992, she was living at home with her mother, stepfather, her three full siblings, and her two half siblings. Oh, man. And they lived in Moore, Oklahoma, near the military base where uh, Candace oh. and Chuck both worked. So they didn't Oof. live on the base, but they did live near the base. Okay. Is it a dangerous area? Because, like, here in Colorado, we have the Air Force Base down in Colorado Springs and mm-hmm. high crime. Because the really? base is there. Interesting. Which sucks. It's such a beautiful area and I would love to live there, but it's super high crime because of... Gosh. No, I, you know what? I, I didn't hear anything wonder. about that or find anything yeah. about that. So. I didn't know if it was related. So Monique was a pretty typical 15-year-old in the early 90s. She wore her long, permed blonde hair. Oh, yeah, she With did. the big curly bangs, lots of spray, oh, right? Oh, Aquanet. Get yep. it. There's lots of pictures and video of her. She's got the oversized sweaters with the leggings, you know. She had blue eyes, a beautiful wide smile with a dimple. Oh, I Um, love dimples. I always wanted She was super cute. Super, super cute. She occasionally wore blue wireframe glasses. I didn't see any pictures of them, but that's what they said. She had a men's green military flight style jacket that she liked to wear. Those were so badass. Right? Okay. Okay. And the other thing that I have no information on, don't know who it was from or whatever, but when she disappeared, she was wearing a man's diamond ring Mm. that was so large that she taped it to her finger so it wouldn't fall off. So like Mm. rolled the tape around the ring to make it fit type thing? I I think so. Something like that. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, okay, I don't know whose it was. Yeah. Maybe a boyfriend's or something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I I thought I was like, oh, maybe it like was her dad's. I'm like, no, she probably didn't wear that. She probably didn't want to wear that. No, probably not. Right. So a grandparent or something, maybe. Yeah, maybe. That's true. So she had dreams of becoming a doctor and having a family of her own someday. Wow. Doctor. Right. So she, you know, for, she from goals. outer appearances, she was a typical teenage mm-hmm. high school 15-year-old, right? Totally. 
Monique's military parents, Chuck and Candace Daniels, ran their home like drill sergeants. Uh Uh-oh. Now, I understand to a little, to a certain extent, they got six kids. That's true. You got to have a good schedule. Yeah. Right. You got to be on them and stuff like this. But this sounds, from what I can understand, from what I've heard, it was over the top, right? Oh, God. It wasn't just that they were strict and that everything had to be spotless at all times. They... There, several of their children have spoken up and said that they were physically and emotionally abusive, oh, no. both to each other and to the kids. That's not a good situation. So it was not okay. a mm-hmm. good environment at all. Sounds like for anyone. Yeah. Um, and Monique, like any teen, she resented her parents' rules and she routinely mm-hmm. fought with them, which is typical even if you don't have these really totally. crazy strict parents and there's abuse and all that. You know, that's, yeah. that's just normal to be pushing the boundaries when you get to that age, right? Hola, got it going on now. <sighs> but, you know, uh, as a lot of people know, sometimes the harder you are on people, the more mm-hmm. they rebel. Oh, yeah. We've seen that. So, yeah, right. So in the months before her disappearance, the relationship between Monique and her parents reached a breaking point. Uh-oh. Monique found out she was pregnant. Uh oh. Oh God. And her parents were furious. Right? I mean, right? Uh, yeah. It wasn't just her. No, <laughs> right. No information. I have no idea who the boy was or anything. Okay. Right? Yeah. Just she was pregnant. Uh-oh. And they forced her to get an abortion. <gasps> oh God. Yeah. Okay. Uh. And soon after that, Monique ran away. Yeah, I can understand. Right. Her parents immediately began searching for her. They jumped at every phone call. If someone called to say they saw her, they got in the car and they ran out to go see if they could find her. It turned out that Monique had been like staying at different friends' houses every night, just kind of like, you know, couch hopping or whatever. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. But after a few days, her best friend convinced her to go home. Oh, okay. So that was, I don't know exactly when, but shortly before she disappeared. This happened. So she did go home. And then the first week of June in 1992, Candace and two of her children, Angelique and Brian, who were the two oldest after Monique. Monique was the oldest. And then I think it was Angelique and then Brian. Okay. They went on a week-long church choir trip. Okay. And then Chuck stayed home with Monique and the other three boys. Okay. Right? Yes. So he was home with the four kids. Angelique remembers that her mother was uncharacteristically quiet during the trip. Like she hmm. just wasn't herself, but Uh-oh. it was just like, okay. Angelique also remembers that when her stepdad, her stepdad Chuck picked them up after the trip, the first thing he said when they got in the car was, she's gone again. Rose. And her mom really just was like, really? Like it wasn't... Hmm. Like she wasn't emotional or like, oh, my like, God, oh, what? Exactly. Like, have you called the police? Who have you talked to? How long has she been gone? It was just like she's gone again. And really? OK. Eh. The strangeness continued when they arrived home. According to Angelique, this is a quote from an interview that she did. Something was off. Something was wrong. The house was in a disarray. We're talking about a spotless environment all of the time. And there were beer bottles, cigarette butts put out on the fireplace mantle. Hmm. There was an empty pregnancy test, just the box on a bathroom counter. Oh, God. Chuck, what are you doing? So it was... I don't trust Chuck. No, right? It was <laughs> it was weird, right? Unlike the last time Monique ran away, her parents didn't seem at all concerned. Hmm. If Monique wanted to be here, she would be, was what their response was. Yeah, but she's not a grown up yet, so you might need to (laughs) take care of her a little more. Not quite 16 yet. Oh my God. So, on the day she disappeared, Chuck said he took the youngest boys fishing, and when they returned, Monique was gone. And a neighbor reported seeing Monique putting clothes into a blue Chevy pickup truck driven by an unidentified Caucasian male Mm. while they were gone fishing. And that's the last reported. Sighting her. Sighting of her. Exactly. I was going to say seeing. I'm like, it's not the last seeing of her. It's the last sighting. (laughs) I have seen. I have seen. seen. Mm. So days turned into weeks. Angelique noticed her parents acting even stranger. Oh, no. She and her siblings were not allowed to talk about Monique. What? Yeah. Okay, that's a huge red flag there. Right. They put put the kibosh on that. Like, we're not going to talk about her. um, Like, she's... Um, 
We're oh. not going to say that name. Oh, like Voldemort. Yes, that one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he whose name... That he who shall spoken. not be named. Yes. Yes. Who shall be named. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Then photos of Monique that had been in the house started to disappear. What? Yeah. What the hell is going on? Right? And I need to have a talk with this family. Right? Isn't that like... That's just weird. Even when your grandparents die years and years later, you still keep pictures out usually or, you know... Right. It, it sounds more like a, they got in a, like a blow up and she was like, you know, I disown you and we all disown you. And, mm. but still it's, still, it's very it's weird. Child. Right. Yeah. And, and they said she, she took off. Then <laughs> they had a family portrait that was hung in their home with mm. the parents and all six kids. I have a, I, I've seen okay. this picture shortly after Monique disappeared, they had a new family photo taken <gasps> without her and put that up in place. Whoa, that's just mean and dirty. And mm-hmm. like, as one of the kids, wouldn't you be like, okay, am I right. going to get replaced? Or <gasps> right? am I erasable? I mean, Ooh. very strange, right? And Chuck Daniels made comments about how the house was so much better now wow. and tranquil. What a right? dad. Aw, thanks. And, yeah. And Angelique knew that he was referring to Monique. Of course. Being. Yeah. How rude. I mean, I'll make comments about like, you know, when my eight-year-old has been like absolutely just a beast all day yeah. and he goes to sleep and it's like, oh, it's so nice now. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but he's just asleep. Right. <laughs> and it's I know not where he is. Gone, gone. Right. I didn't take a family Oof. photo without him. <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> Jeez. Like, Maybe uh. next year. <laughs> <laughs> There's always next year. Oh, God. Okay. God. In January of 1993, seven months after Monique supposedly ran away. Ooh, okay. Monique's aunt, Candace's sister, who had lived in Michigan, contacted police to ask about her niece's case. Okay, okay, the aunt. The, aunt's the aunt the, cares more than the parents. The aunt. Great. The aunt's name was Leslie Wentrick, and Leslie wanted to get her niece's information to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Nice. At least right? someone's doing something. Yeah. Right. She was shocked to find out that no missing persons report had been <gasps> filed. They didn't this say is anything. Seven and not, months later. And the school's not like, hey, your daughter isn't registered anywhere or. Maybe they did, uh, right? and they made up an excuse. I, I right, yeah. I I don't know, right? Seems really mm-hmm. shady, right? Really shady. Coincidentally, two days later, Candace calls her sister Leslie and says, "Hey, Monique actually called home." <sighs> yeah, she said that Angelique answered the phone, and Monique told her that she was safe. That's all you need to know, Mom. Bye. Right. right. So I'm not worried anymore. You can you can lay out right. the missing persons report. Exactly. Never mind. Oh God. Then a week later, a letter from Monique arrived in the mail, mm-hmm. and it was postmark. The postmark was from Dallas, Texas, hmm. and the letter said that Monique was married and had given birth to a daughter that she named Chelsea. Except she would only be what sixteen. Yeah, and it's not legal, is it, to get married? No, under- I don't think so. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't mm. think so. Um, And then a second letter arrived in September of 1993. And this time, Monique said that her husband and daughter were currently living in Alaska and they moved frequently for his job. Okay. Right? It's it's really weird, right? Yeah. And and the aunt, Leslie Wentrick, was like, this is suspicious, right? Yeah. (laughs) She called bullshit. bullshit. I don't believe it. I call shenanigans. (laughs) <laughs> so she asked the police to examine the handwriting on the letters to see if it matched samples of Monique's handwriting. And wow. the police agreed that they would look at it, right? But the day before Candace Daniels was supposed to bring the letters and the samples to the police department, mm-hmm. their home was burglarized. And weirdly, <laughs> the letters must have been taken. So according what? to Angelique, the furniture was tipped over. There were some CDs mis- missing, a couple of boom boxes, and the letters. Because those are like gold. Right. Of because, course you would take letters if you're going to steal right. some 
boom boxes. Right. They're like, you guys, there's like a computer in here and a stereo. <laughs> Forget that, man. Look at these Look letters. At this. <laughs> Look at this, man. This is awesome. I really like this handwriting. What the hell? <laughs> okay, stupid. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nope. Absolutely ridiculous, right? In January of 1994, a now 15-year-old Angelique Daniels ran away from home. Oh, God. She took a Greyhound bus from Oklahoma to Michigan to go live with her Aunt Leslie. Oh, okay. Right? It's her story. We need to hear what's been happening, Angelique. Well, Candace and Chuck reported her missing immediately. Huh. As soon as she took So they still liked her. They still wanted her in the family photo for a bit. Yeah. Exactly. They're just, we just got the family photo redone. God, do you know? We don't want to have to do this again. What is it? Olin Mills is really expensive, okay? It's <laughs> it's so expensive. Next time we're using Sears. <laughs> right, exactly. Maybe JCPenney. Oh, Maybe JCPenney, right. After Angelique arrived at her aunt's home, she filed criminal complaints against her mother and stepfather. This is wow. a 15-year-old girl. Brave. Granted, I'm sure she had the help of her aunt, but you know. Right. This is a quote from her. The next day we went to Child Protective Services and I filed childhood abuse charges against my parents, said Angelique. My parents were trying to get me extradited back to Oklahoma, but the judge said no way. And I found out later that they pled no contest to child abuse and neglect. And yet there's still four kids at home. Yeah. Can't they take when they go in and take them away? You would think? No, they didn't. Uh, right? Weird, right? Yeah. Okay. So Angelique also confessed to her aunts and the police that Monique's phone call and the letters were fake. No. <gasps> she said, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she said her stepfather, Chuck, told her to lie about Aww. receiving a call from Monique because her mother, who was so distraught over her eldest daughter's disappearance or running away, mm-hmm. that he said, your mom's becoming, has become suicidal. Oh, so how you manipulative. Do, uh-huh. So Ugh. you need to do this, right? It's awful. Chuck made Angelique write the letters, too. And sh- Angelique said, he took me to the grocery store and picked out stationery to write the letter on. He told me what to write. I felt very threatened. Then, get this, then he drove her 200 miles south to Dallas Mm, to to mail them, right? Oh, my God. Angelique remembers feeling guilty about writing the letters, even though she was, she couldn't have been more than 14 at the time, right? Plus, you're scared to death of your abusive parents. So, this this is a quote from her, too. Most of the information from the story comes directly from Angelique. Okay. She said, I was scared. I was really afraid for myself. And, you know, I thought I was going to be wherever she was soon. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. But this is makes me feel really bad. Mm -hmm. She said, I thought he sent her away because he threatened it to us so often that they had places for girls like us. There were military schools for girls like us. So it didn't occur to her that That her sister was killed or something dead or she (sighs) thought she was sent away. Yeah. Oh, how sad. God, so, manipulative piece of shit. When the police asked Chuck about Angelique's allegations about the, the abuse and stuff like that, he admitted they was, it was all true. He admitted that he admitted that. He admitted that he told her to write the letters and the phone call and all this. And a missing persons report for Monique was finally filed nearly <sighs> two years after she was last seen. Because uh, that helps. Everything's right? gone. Oh my God. Any right. evidence, anything. Yeah. yeah. Detective Coleman of the Moore Police Department said that Candace's excuse was that they believe their daughter ran away and so they didn't make a big deal about it. Because <laughs> we don't care. Right. Yeah. But the first time she be... ran away, you guys made a big right. deal about it. We cared. And then when time... your other daughter ran away, you made a big deal about yeah. it. Yeah. Why right? is this time different? So police tried to question Chuck and Candace, but they refused to cooperate and neither would agree to a polygraph test. Hmm. So Detective Coldman had said, it's everyone's constitutional right. They don't have to talk to us if they don't want to. Right. True. But they also didn't have anything to go on. They didn't have proof that she ran away. They didn't have any evidence that she didn't run away. They just, they didn't know where she was. They didn't have reason to believe she met with foul play. I and mean, there was just. Yeah, there's no evidence because nothing. nobody and said right. anything. And it's two years. <sighs> so they tried to follow up on lead, leads, but, you know, all they knew about was a, a blue Chevy and an 
a male. And, yeah, that she put clothes in the truck. Oh, I forgot about the blue Chevy. Yeah. Right? Angelique and her Aunt Leslie decided to go public, appearing on various TV shows to discuss their suspicions Ooh, surrounding Chuck and Candace in an attempt to get Monique's story out there and maybe bring in some leads, yeah. right? Or let Monique know, hey, we're looking for yeah. you or whatever, yeah. right? Call in. That's when Chuck and Candace fled. Oh, that's not mm. suspicious at all. <laughs> right. Angelique <laughs> said, once they found out we had gone on a current affair. Remember mm. the current affair? Oh, I Love remember that. That. Right. that was a good one. Once they found out we had gone on a current affair, they left the country and they went to Germany. Wow. They left, left. Mm -hmm. So officially, the official story is Chuck got a military transfer okay. to a new base. I had a feeling that was coming. Yep. Yeah, I got transfers. Right. What? Right. Out of the country. Out of nowhere. The timing is just right, too. Yeah, right? Weird. So, but before they left, Angelique got a call from her 13-year-old brother, Andrew, Aww. who was the next youngest. It was her, and then Brian, and then Andrew, and then the twins. Okay. Okay. Um, and he called and said, you got to come get me. Oh, poor baby. No shit. <sighs> Andrew also claimed to have suffered from abuse in the Daniels' home. But when his parents left to live in Germany, he went with them. Oh, no. I don't know why. I don't know if he didn't have a choice. I don't yeah. know if he actually couldn't do something. But I don't know if they left too fast. I don't, I don't know. All I know is they, Chuck and Candace, took all four boys with them okay, and went to Germany. They took all the others. Yeah. For the next 10 years. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. I thought this was but, a good time for a break because yeah, it's. Yeah. I, but That'd yeah. I was just going to say, but the, aren't they still on um, U.S. soil, being that it's on Ooh. a military base? You would think they'd still be. I don't know, but they don't have the anything to go on. That's so true. I don't... So. Fasten your seatbelt. Shit's about to get real. Oh, shit. Okay. Go oh, yeah. We're going to fast forward to May of 2013. Oof. Yeah, that's right? a long time. Okay. okay. It is two decades after Monique was last seen <sighs> and she supposedly ran away. Yeah. And another tragedy struck, this time in the form of a tornado. Oh. Uh -oh. You're like, uh, what? <laughs> what? Where did the tornado come Wait, in? What? Do, in Germany? In, how, in America? How Oklahoma. Do we, That's right. Oklahoma. We're in Oklahoma. How do we blame Chuck for this one? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Damn it, Chuck, again. He was with the Air Force. He was with, you're right. You're right. Okay. So this is Angelique uh, talking. She said, an F5 tornado ripped through Moore, Oklahoma, just trashing it. And I was watching it on TV. All these homes that I played in as a kid mm. just obliterated. And the phone rings and it's Andrew. He's crying. And I'm like, what's going on? Are you OK? And he said, she wasn't talking. And I said, what do you mean she wasn't talking? And he's like, Ange, I was there and she wasn't talking. Oh, my God. What? Whoa. I knew he, she said, I knew he was talking about Monique <sighs> and I knew he was about to tell me. And so I was quiet and just listened. Mm. So, so he would have been how old by this point? Oh, gosh. 20 okay, something. So, yeah. So if he was 13 when they left. Yeah, he was in his 20s or 30s. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Um, and apparently it was also it was the tornado. And seeing all that and all this trauma oh. from his childhood came back, right? Everything that he had buried. It. So, okay, here you go. This is where we got to buckle up. All right. Oh, shit. Accord oh, yeah, I know. Especially with the tornado in coming. <laughs> yeah, buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> Get to a room underground a or no windows. Ugh. Yeah, go Ugh. some central location. Okay. According to Andrew, the last day he saw Monique started out like a lot of days in their house. Monique was fighting with their stepdad. It was... You know, typical. Yeah. They're shouting at each other or whatever. Sometime later, Chuck gathered up the boys for a spontaneous fishing trip, which wasn't unusual, right? Oh, hey, we're all okay. going to go fishing, right? Okay. Except it was pouring out. Oh, <laughs> I've heard it's good to fish in the rain. Maybe <laughs> fish are biting more. They're like, look at all these things coming to right. the surface. Right, or they just figure they're like, that can't be a fisherman. No dumbasses out there <laughs> fishing. I don't know, right? I, I'm obviously not a big fisher. Me neither. Um, Andrew said, quote, before we left, my dad was like, hey, you guys need to go in and say goodbye to Monique. 
Because this is the last time you'll ever see her. What? How weird and creepy is that? What? Normally they'd be like, your sister's being a brat. We're all going yeah, fishing. We're <laughs> leaving. Like, no right? shit. She's oh. going to sit in there and think about what she did. You know, something like that. No, it was, you all need to go say goodbye to her. Whoa. And he said, we all went in there like a single file. That's weird. Like a he funeral said, procession. Right? <gasps> or uh, um the reception line after or the wedding the wedding right where you go down the you <laughs> yes, know the reception right. line that's probably uh, a happier place to think of yeah <laughs> there you go yeah. he said we all went in there like a single file i was in front then my little brother's behind me and monique was in her room but chuck only allowed the boys to talk to monique through her cracked bedroom door right so say goodbye to your sister but we're just going to crack the door open and you're just going to kind of say goodbye through the oh, door oh god was she already heard andrew said when i saw monique she was on the floor in her bedroom her legs were crossed and she was still oh god that doesn't sound good no right Mm -hmm. and so and this would have been let's see so 15 he probably was about 11 oh would be my guess at this time 10 or 11 when this happened (sighs) then chuck ushered the boys out of the house and into the car Without their fishing poles. Oh, whoops. We forgot something. And they drove off in the pouring rain to go fishing. So in her room, she didn't say anything back to them when they said goodbye? Okay, nothing. Oh, God. He didn't even specify if he saw her face. No, Because it was just a crack in the door. So... I don't know. And and for the fishing, maybe (sighs) they're doing the cat fishing where you got to stand in the water and grab them. Have you seen those... (laughs) Yes. I have heard about that. I'm pretty sure you have to be That's what they're going to do. You have, yeah. to, you have to be missing at least like five teeth. Right. Yeah. There's a, there's a specific, you have to be really good at that. You have to have certain uh, skills and a certain number of teeth. Look. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it scares the fish. <laughs> they jump right out of the water. <laughs> so Andrew recalled, we drove for two hours one way. Hmm. Got off on an exit somewhere and went to a McDonald's. Hmm. Oh, they, they were they, having a fillet of fish. Of, oh, that's it. He just misunderstood. There you go. That makes more sense. <laughs> um, and then they just turned around and went home. So there was no fishing. Hmm. No, no fishing. No, they, they just hmm. had the fillet of fish, right? He said, we got home back to the house. And then my dad pulls the car into the garage. And he goes inside and leaves the three boys in the car in the garage for like an hour or more. What the? What? what? Right. And you know what kind of a disciplinarian this man must be. And I use that loosely. Right. If the three of them are sitting in the garage, in the car, and they don't yep. dare get out. Yep. They know they better not. They're like, nope, we're <sighs> not horrible. going anywhere until someone tells us it's okay. It's right? Horrible. Okay. So when Chuck finally let the boys out of the car, Andrew ran straight for the bathroom because well, yeah, oh, boy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, this is okay. This one gives me the creeps. Okay. So, this is a quote from him I had a real eerie feeling in the bathroom that day, you know. I was that actually. That happens to be in the bathroom, too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he said, I was actually like scared. I hadn't seen Monique. The shower was closed. There's yeah. things that lead me to believe that she was in that bathroom. <gasps> That is a horror movie for sure. Nope. Right? So he was too afraid probably to look at the An 11-year-old should mm-hmm. not have these thoughts. No. Right? But to suspect it, there had to be something behind it. But before Andrew could check, Chuck hustled all the boys into his bedroom and told them he was going to go out and look for Monique. Then he closed and locked the door to the bedroom. Whoa. And left them there. For two days. Two days? What? Two days? Two days. What? No, no food? No nothing? Nope. (gasps) Oh, babies. Andrew said, after that, I don't really remember much of what happened, meaning I don't recall the incidences after that. That's like Mm -hmm. where his memory kind of starts to get fuzzy. At some point, however, during those two days, Chuck came back in the middle of the night just to leave again with one of the twins. Hmm, that's weird. So I don't know which twin this was or Hmm. what his name was, but there's a quote from Angelique that said, he said, the only thing I can remember is being in the back of dad's truck and there was an oil barrel in the back. Hmm. That's all I remember. Those damn barrels. I, 
Right? There's, Nothing ever good comes mm-mm. from an oil barrel. Mm-mm. Except mm-mm. maybe oil, but oil's not good either. So. <laughs> Except it. <laughs> That's, it's all a mess. Oh, I no. mean, just from like random people having one, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's just suspicious. Oh, God. So Angelique convinced Andrew to go to police with his story. Detectives went as far as digging up the backyard of the home the Daniels family was living in at the time. Yeah. But they didn't find anything, right? Because oil barrel. Yeah. Or two miles to a McDonald's. I don't know. Right. Like all kinds of. There's all po- sorts of places he could have put it. I bet there's exactly. tons of junkyards that oh, God, could be right? dumped in. Ooh. All right. So Leslie Westrick, the aunt, she worked with three psychics in an effort to solve the mystery of her niece's disappearance. Mm. All three agreed that Monique had been strangled <sighs> and that her body would be found in a rural area. 25 miles east of Tinker Air Force Base, which is where Chuck and Candace had been employed. Tinker. I don't know if I'd want to fly in one of those. It's a Tinker I, yeah, toy. This isn't so, yeah, it doesn't sound real safe, right? I'm like, huh. mm, is there another one nearby? This we is could the children's airport. Air, air, I want to go to a different one. No, I wanna go anyway. To, yeah. In August of 1994, Leslie and one of the psychics traveled to Oklahoma to search the area. They found remnants of a barn as well as a red Mm. purse, which all three psychics had envisioned. But it doesn't say that any of those things had anything to do with Monique. Right. I don't know about that. However, they were unable to find Monique's body underneath a pile of boards and debris where they believed she had been placed. So all three (gasps) of them had seen her body underneath these boards and things, but they couldn't find. Weird. Okay. And unfortunately, the police would not help them with this search. Yeah. Yeah. So like, no, we're not going to have anything to do with this. Yeah. Psychic. Okay. In 2016, 2016 now. Jeez. Just keep going. Crime Watch Daily tracked down Chuck and Candace at their home in Tampa, Florida. Uh, Freeze birds. You knew Mm. they had to. You knew they had to go back to Florida because Florida is where all the. (laughs) Right. What the hell, Florida. So Crime Watch Daily, the reporter actually approached Candace in the driveway. And when she was asked about Monique's disappearance and Angelique and Andrew's allegations, Candace said, quote, whatever happened, it's in God's hands. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask now that you leave. And Angelique is a really messed up young lady. Like I said, before you start taking and asking me about anything, you need to just I think, leave the property before I call the police. Angelique is not a reliable source. (sighs) What a mom. You know what, mom? Right. When you're in jail, thoughts and prayers, bitch. Thoughts and prayers. (laughs) Thoughts and prayers. Exactly. That's all I got for you. Right. So then Candace went into the house. There's actually, you can find video of this online. Shortly after that, Chuck Daniels pulls into the driveway. And his response to the reporter was, did you check your sources with them, an alcoholic and a drug addict? And then he continued with, under advice of counsel, I have nothing to say to you. Angie, I love you. Sorry about that. Stay off my property. (laughs) I'm feeling so gaslighted. It's Uh. great, right? When the reporter tried once more to ask Chuck what happened to Monique, he replied, it's in God's hands. I don't know. Wow. Wow. So you guys have Mm -hmm. a script or? Yeah. This feels rehearsed a little bit. Mm-hmm, a little bit. Right. And did you place her in God's hands? Or, oh, yeah. yeah. How do you know it's How in God's you know hands? She's mm-hmm. in God's hands. Oh, that'd be a good one to say right then. So Angelique is now married and she still lives in Michigan. She admits to struggling with years of mental anguish, but denies ever having a substance abuse problem. Like, seriously, is it your credit that's ruined or theirs? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I'm worried about you, honey. Right. I think it's them. Right. And Andrew has admitted that he had issues in the past, but he's completely clean and sober. Again, well, shit. it would be who like, who would blame you? Yeah. Like, how do you not have problems growing up in an abusive family like that? Seriously. You're going to have right? something. Yeah. One of the twins, whose name is Charlie Jr., and I don't know if this is the same one who ended up going with him in the middle of the night or not that I don't know now as an adult has said that he remembers the day Monique disappeared and he remembers it differently than his brothers. He said, quote, I think I was the last one to speak to Monique and she was laying in her bed and she gave me a hug and said, have a good day. I'm sorry. I'm sick. I can't go with you. And she was fine. Hmm. 
could be a placed memory, just saying. Right? Or mm-hmm. he talked to her and then something else happened. I mm-hmm. you know, I mean I still think that I rode an elephant at one point, but apparently I never did, so that I'm, so- I'm sorry, what? I what <laughs> I think I must have had a dream or saw a postcard or something when I was a kid of someone riding an elephant, you know, and I swore it was me. I thought for sure I had done that as a kid <laughs> and brought it up as an adult to my mom. And she's like, what? You never rode an elephant? <laughs> I'm like, what? All these 10 years I thought oh, I rode an elephant. So see. My God. Yeah. So I don't know. Right. I don't know if you can trust those childhood memories all the time. So to this day, Monique Christine Daniels remains a missing person, not not a murdered, unsolved right. murder. She is just a missing. They've never person. found any anything no. to do with it. God. But I, seriously, I really think I think the dad, I think the mom knew about it. Oh, for sure, since she had right? no emotion. And I think maybe the dad did something, um, or I definitely think the dad did it. Well, I or think was involved somehow. Right. So I'm just wondering, like, did he do something and then I don't, did he do something to her, but she wasn't necessarily dead. And then she took all, he took all the boys and drove them two hours and ditched evidence there mm-hmm. and for then sure. came back and then dealt with the body. Well, to leave them for two days, he had to be doing something. Yeah. Two days. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. what a piece of shit. And know, they're right? just free. Yeah. Free. To live their and, lives. And yeah. And no one's looking for anything. I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't understand how they got to leave the country with those kids when there were mm-hmm. allegations. Yeah, child abuse allegations. <sighs> I I wouldn't doubt it's because they're military. You get little I, yeah. special benefits that way. So I'm convinced it's a murder story. Pretty sure Chuck, you suck. Chuck Chuck, you suck. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Would you like to hear my sources? I have some um, sources. I would like to hear this. My, my mean, main source is Angelique herself. Like she yeah. did a lot of yeah, this. Yeah. So uh, truecrimedaily.com. Also ranker.com, uh, charlieproject.org, brenmar71.medium.com. Hmm, I don't one. know about that one. And then k4.com, which was a Oklahoma news. Oh, gotcha. Uh, news website so it's not kindergarten through fourth grade.com no not kindergarten through fourth grade.com no. <laughs> but yeah i i think wow yeah yeah for sure. i don't i don't think she made it to 16 Mm-mm. and i think it was her stepdad and man i just uh, there was a part where um they inter- when they were interviewing angelique and it was a video and they were talking about like when their mom got remarried and she's like you know talking about how her dad obviously was a very hurtful dangerous person her her, mm-hmm. her biological, biological father and here she was so excited to be getting oh, a new hopeful. dad and having yeah. a oh, right? no <sighs> a choice it makes me wonder too if monique was pregnant with chuck's baby. <gasps> oh and that now maybe that's why angelique <gasps> left too was she was also getting abuse Shh. I'm starting yeah. new rumors. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, well, you know what? It's all kinds of it's messed up. It's all kind of deserved. The one thing I could say, though, is Candace mm-hmm. has shit for taste in men. Can I tell you that? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And to stand by him <laughs> over her own children. Oh, God. Yeah, right? Despicable. That's disgusting. It so, is. Totally disgusting. Can't relate. So, anyway, so that is one Daniels for murder. One Daniels on the books. One Daniels. Oh, these are so. the Dens I know, I know. <laughs> these are the Daniels I know. <laughs> hey, Oddies, thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM. If you're a longtime listener, hey, we cannot thank you enough for your continued support. And if you're a new listener, thanks for giving us a try. If you like us, please drop us a like, subscribe, or rate us so we can share our stories with more people around the world. And if you'd like more information, like links to our podcast and socials, along with our Patreon fan page, those links are all on Linktree under ODFM Podcast. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash ODFM Podcast. Side note, you guys, we're obsessed with fan art, and we love making things with it, like stickers for our fans. So if you'd like us to use your designs, send it to us at ODFMPodcast at gmail.com. And if we use your design, we'll be sure to send you a sticker. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM. 
hosted by Kelly DeVries and Jenna Swanson. Production and editing by Kelly DeVries. Theme music by Eric Swanson. ODFM is a satirical true crime podcast for entertainment purposes only. The stories you hear are serious and true. The comments and opinions are not. We apologize if any of our content is harmful or disrespectful.